wonderful group of presenters. I've had a chance to talk with most of them personally. I also want to thank uh, Mike Brown and NASCA. We've had a good cooperative relationship on this effort. And Ray, uh, great job running this. Uh, sorry for the snafu, but I think we're ready to go. All right, Bill. Fire away. I see by the clock we're moving quickly here uh, past our time. So I'm going to move uh, to uh, kind of a higher view of some of the state programs that we talked about. Uh, you can see, as you've heard throughout the morning, that certainty uh, is considered by some. And our friend Brad in Minnesota mentioned that as a door to regulation. Uh, others uh, considered it a door to avert regulation. Uh, I think that those of us who studied this and worked with the programs realize, uh, next slide, Ray, that this can be a voluntary program that helps achieve an array of goals. Some regulatory certainty, uh, some water quality goals, an array of other conservation goals. Enhanced public perception of agriculture. One point I want to make uh, is the next bullet of a potential linkage to ecosystem services payments. I know Ray out in the Northwest, you have the Willamette Project. Um, and there are others that are taking place around the country, both local and regional in scope. I think there's some natural linkages here. And I'll talk about a couple of them. There's also opportunities for other market components. I'm talking about private sector uh, relationships with corporations that have sustainability platforms and other uh, green goals. And I think it's been mentioned a couple of times, uh, the potential for producers to achieve uh, value-added uh, uh, incentives for their products to affinity labeling and, and other tools. We can go on to the next slide. Uh, we pretty much have covered this. I just wanted to let, remind folks that USDA uh, has uh, jumped behind this program. And uh, NRCS's role uh, with our local and state entities has been a technical service uh, system. They've, they're interested in the technical assistance side. Uh, they want you to run your programs. And so on to the next slide. If anybody's interested in what Lisa Jackson said when Minnesota and the federal government signed that MOU, there's her comments. And we can go on to the next slide then. NACD similarly has gotten squarely behind uh, the concept of certainty, and we're happy to uh, happy to say that uh, you know as this organization has long uh, been a supporter of locally led conservation, uh, it believes that certainty fits into that framework. And we can go on to the next slide. So uh, you you've heard a lot about. Uh, these great certainty programs that are in place right now. Uh, and uh, none of those on the in place side of the ledger are a surprise. You know a lot about them now. A number of them are developing, um, including Virginia, as you heard today, and, uh, and Minnesota, a few others. I'm going to step out on a limb here. We've had a lot of snowy weather in Wisconsin in the past few weeks, and the weather prognosticators have been about 50% correct about what and when would arrive. I'm going to do them better and say I'm going to predict at 100% level that by this time next year we'll have several more in the developing stage. Uh, this thing is really picking up steam. Uh, I know Mike Brown and Ray were both at NACD's annual meeting uh, recently, and I'm sure you heard the same thing I did, and that is that we have a lot of interest from other states. So 
watch it happen. Go on to that next slide, Ray. You know, this is a little bit of a comparative analysis uh, of the programs in place, and to some extent, those are developing. Uh, one key is they are all voluntary with the uh, with the asterisk for Texas, as we learned. They all seek a form of regulatory certainty, especially at the state level. And just to emphasize the word voluntary, there it is again. You've heard that there's a strong uh, conservation district role and uh, in partnership with state agencies, state conservation agencies. So it's a, it's a real uh, Tight, uh, tight bond between those two entities. Confidentiality is obviously a concern for producers. Uh, verification uh, and the requirements vary, but all of the programs do require some sort of verification. And there are incentives for participants. And I'll mention a little more about that on the other side when we get to variations in the program. Uh, obviously, you've heard that there are various paths toward certification. Some have a three-step process. Some have a five-step process. Some st step require some sort of annual verification. Some require it at a different level. Uh, in the case of the Louisiana Farmer uh, Master Farmer Program, there is an annual educational component. Uh, there's also a variation in the lengths of the certification and in program requirements. These vary from state to state. I might add that this is not bad. If we consider the states the incubators and the laboratories for our grand experiments in this country, that's the way it should be happening. Uh, BMPs versus the field office technical guide and state approved practices. I think there's room for there's room for both in these programs. I would remind folks considering uh, uh, developing a program, the communication is a key here. And especially with your state conservationists, uh, because uh, some of the programs are tied to uh, uh, people getting extra points for equip practices and other uh, cost share programs. So it's not to say that you have to stay strictly the field office technical guide. But you want to make sure that the BMPs that you include uh, mesh well enough so those producers can get the maximum gain out of participation. And uh, some programs uh, obviously seek to achieve an array of other conservation goals. So we can go on to the next slide, Ray. Yeah, very quickly to the next one. And from selected program highlights, we'll go forward to the next slide. Uh, this is nothing new to you folks. Uh, what it might provide is a very brief summary of what you heard uh, earlier today. And so we can go on to the next slide. And Michigan, Jan Wilford's program has been a real star. A um, couple points to emphasize there. Um, they're real big into the signage and recognition for farmers. Um, and you can see that sign down in the lower right-hand corner of the slide. Uh, I think that another logical step for these programs would be to award some annual awards to your top participants. Um, the blueberries we point to down there in terms of farmers using certificate and marketing. Uh, uh, I think that some of the blueberry growers use that as a affinity labeling technique. Um, and I might add that back in Louisiana, um, where the Master Farmer Program includes a Master Rice Farmer Program, those farmers uh, actually receive a 20% premium on their crop uh, from Kellogg's, which has a sustainable aid platform um, and uh, as many other corporations, is looking for opportunities to cooperate with producers to show their sustainability goals are being achieved. So we can go to the next slide. Uh, New York, uh, 
Again, heavy emphasis on, uh, you know, showing that producers are good stewards of the land. And once again, heavy engagement from soil and water conservation districts and the agency. Uh, not a certainty program, as you learned, but about as close as you can get. And we'll go forward then once again to Louisiana. I was waiting to answer that question about number of participants, Ray, and I'm glad I didn't because they've gained some sense we put this slide together. Here's a case of where producers do read, read, uh, receive a digital equip points. So good for them. And then uh, moving forward, what about your state? We want to know. I think that you can contact our friends at NASCA or you can contact me at NACD. One of the things we're very interested going forward, and this is a word that we all are aware of, is outcomes. What are the outcomes of these programs that are in place and potential outcomes of those that we've heard about that are being developed? And uh, there's, a, there's an array of them. Uh, some of them are environmental. I think Texas has, has uh, some means by which they can uh, gauge the amount of gains in terms of P&M. Uh, there are also social gains. If you go back to the Michigan program and the slide of the number of cooperating and collaborating organizations, uh, it's pretty remarkable. And uh, this is something that we've worked on hard. Uh, we all know the value of partnerships. Uh, certainty programs are helping to really solidify that. I think there's some obvious political uh, gains to be made from these programs. Uh, be they in future regulatory actions uh, or strategies, and simply the ability to put uh, people from a array of backgrounds together in the same room and as my friend John McDonald, a conservation leader out in Washington State, or in Oregon, likes to say, uh, the politics of human interaction. And so um, with that, I'm going to kind of be quiet and see if there's anything else that uh, folks have questions about.